Welcome to my channel. I'm very thankful that you are here to watch my videos. I appreciate every person that comes to my channel, including the ones that are here for the first time. So thank you very much. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. I have several articles for you, as I usually do. This first one is titled Victory. Federal Court Rules University of Colorado Vaccine Policies quote, motivated by religious animus, unquote. Denver, Colorado, the United States Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit reversed a lower court decision on May 7, 2024, issuing a 56-page ruling holding that the University of Colorado Anschutz School of Medicine's policies refusing religious exemptions to its COVID-19 vaccination mandate were, quote, motivated by religious animus, unquote, and unconstitutional under the First Amendment's religion clause. In addition to finding religious animus, the court found that the vaccine mandates of the universities at Anschutz Medical Campus granted, quote, exemptions for some religions, but not others, because of difference in their religious doctrine, doctrines, and granted secular exemptions on more favorable terms than religious exemptions, all of which was illegal. The court also reaffirmed the First Amendment principle that government may not test the sincerity of employees' religious beliefs by judging the legitimacy of those doctrines. The court also held that the university mandates violated clearly established constitutional rights. That is very interesting. I'm not quite sure what the folks there at Colorado were thinking, but they got slapped down by the court. It'll be interesting to see if they decide to take that to the Supreme Court, which they can if they want to, but you know, you would think that after uh, the wording of this ruling that they would say, ah, oh, maybe we shouldn't fight this. The second article I have is Suicide Squad video game loses $200 million after Warner Brothers Discovery hires DEI Consulting Group. Um, I don't know very much about gaming. I've never been a gamer. I don't play games other than solitaire and free sell and those kinds of things. But apparently it's a uh, big, huge industry and um, Warner, or excuse me, um, yeah, Warner Brothers Discovery lost $200 million on a game. I don't know how you lose money on a game. I don't understand much about gaming at all. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I thought it was an interesting development. Um, this third item that I have is a video. It's a short video, but I wanted to share it with you because I, I just found it really interesting. Why is there, does there seem to so be... So let's kill that and run it back to the beginning. Um, this is produced by the Free Press, and it's um, their Ben Meets America series. This man named Ben is going around America, meeting Americans and talking to them. And there's one exchange in here, which I will stop the video when we get to it, because it just absolutely cracked me up. But I thought you might find this interesting. Why is there, does there seem to be such a connection between reggae music and marijuana? Cannabis is a meditation element. And it's not, I'm just gonna come out here and get high, lay down and just, like the old days, you know, stoner just sits around and eats, that's not. No, you can eat and listen to music. I was at the Dallas Reggae Festival, trying not to harsh everyone's vibe. How would you define reggae culture? It's just free spirit. Just be who you are, love. Always keep it one love. One love. One love. One love. I think what brought me closest to reggae is sharing hemp hats. Sharing might have been a stretch. I did, in fact, have to pay for this thing. Thank you so much. I love you, man. I, I, you seem great. The next day, I managed to find the one guy who didn't seem high on anything, let alone universal love. How do you think America's doing generally? Joe Biden is, uh, I'm not going to make any disparaging comments to him, but... Uh, I think you are. I'm, I, no, I'm not. I, I'm, say, I'm saying I'm not going to, but uh, Joe Biden is a piece of shit. I told you to behave yourself today. What can America <laughs> learn from reggae culture? 
to be relaxed with an open mind, not be so uptight. To learn, you got to be offensive, but not intentionally. You have to be offensive, but not intentionally. Yes. Like, I see you. I can assume that you're white, but that's not necessarily true. You can be... How dare African. you? So America needs to learn that just because you do something offensive doesn't mean you meant to? You meant to, because sometimes you, you're learning out of ignorance. This sure sounded to me like permission to start asking people about race. What do you think the biggest racial problem in America is? Um, the, the talk about the divide. People just need to be people, you know? Like, hey, love everybody for what they are versus, you know, polarizing everything. Do you think America is a racist country? No, 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 no. America is definitely not a racist com country. It's just certain individual. And, and in Jamaica, we have a thing saying, um, empty bottle make the most noise. Is the South racist? To a, to a degree, yes. More so than the North, would you say? In the South, they're more up, op up, up front and open. So at least you know. How is it open Amazing. in this? I mean, is it, are you just talking about like Confederate flags? Or what, no, what's the, what's I'm just saying thing? that you know when certain people will welcome you. You know, and you know when they say no, get away from me, or I don't want to be bothered, or no. Where have you feel like you've experienced more racism, Louisiana or Texas? Uh, I haven't really experienced it. Really? In all my years, I haven't experienced it. Can you think of a single racist that's thing that's happened to you? No. We talked to someone yesterday who said she'd never experienced racism. It's easy to be someone and be very ignorant about it because I probably wouldn't have it experienced it as much had I not grown up in a very diverse community. Well, she was black. Oh. Have you ever? <laughs> that just cracked me up. Well, she was black. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't resist. <laughs> Befriended a racist person. I have not befriended a racist. I have befriended someone who was atheist. Oh, even worse. <laughs> Again, I am um, a selfless love person, so I'm agape love. I had to Google this word, agape. It refers to a profound sacrificial love that transcends circumstance. I don't know if a slogan like one love can save the country but it was nice to be in one corner of America that at least felt like it didn't need saving. Do I give racist energy? White people are terrified that we do. No. How much racist energy do I give? No! One to ten. I don't, I don't feel that. Oh, good. Fantastic. I don't feel that. That's what we needed. <laughs> You've been great. Goodbye. <laughs> I just thought you'd find that interesting. And the final article I have is Soros and U.S. government behind the conspiracy theories and attacks on Twitter Files Brazil. Now, <clears throat> you could probably read this and get several different things out of it, but the first thing that came to mind is, to me, I'm sick and tired of my country interfering in other countries' business. What is America doing in Brazil trying to influence them one way or another? I don't... I'm tired of it. I'm really tired of it. The United States needs to take care of itself. You have enough problems here. Just all the corruption and all the rottenness and evil that's here in our country. Why are we trying to pick at the nits of other countries when we have all these huge moats in our own eyes? It just disgusts me. Anyway, with regard to the story itself, uh... I wanted to read you a couple paragraphs here at the beginning. An extremist, imperialist, global conspiracy aimed at misleading the public. Could you possibly use any more adjectives there? Uh, misleading the public and undermining democracy was behind the April 3rd, 2024 publication of the Twitter Files Brazil, say leading Brazilian journalists, researcher, and social media influencers. Intercept Brazil claimed that the U.S. House Judiciary Committee, which had produced a report on censorship in Brazil, inspired by the Twitter Files Brazil, was defending neo-Nazi groups in order to attack Supreme Court Justice Alejandro de Moraes. You know this term, neo-Nazi, just... People don't really understand what the Nazis were. They were socialists. <laughs> they were 
they were not right wing. Anyway, uh, and then there's another line down here at the bottom that I wanted to read you. Uh, Minister Alejandre de Mora summoned Google executives to testify based solely on a 2023 NetLab report about Google after a Lula government official initiated an investigation and the president of Brazil's Chamber of Deputies, equivalent to the House of Representatives in the United States, filed a com criminal complaint. I'll tell you where they get these ideas from. They get it from our Congress calling all these big tech guys in and railing against them for misinformation. Uh, mm. As for Intercept Brazil, it was created and financed by billionaire eBay founder Pierre Omidar, Omidyar and Soros. In 2022, Soros Open Society Foundations gave Intercept Brazil $207,000 in funding through its First Look Institute. Open Society has also funded Sleeping Giants, which launched a campaign to demonetize the X after Musk criticized Demoris. Open Society Foundation and Ford Foundation gave the group $470,000 in 2022 and 2023. It's amazing to me how these leftists are constantly funding all these NGOs, non-governmental organizations that are dedicated to tearing societies apart and nobody says anything. It's just amazing to me. During the 2022 election campaign, the TSE, chaired by Moraes, endorsed recommendations made by SGBR and in August 2023, no, I don't know what all these acronyms mean, Mayara Steli, co-founder of Sleeping Giants, participated in the Combating Disinformation and Defending Democracy seminar held by the Brazilian Supreme Court, STF, alongside Alejandro de Moras. Finally, Open Society funds NetLab, giving it $315,000, one of its largest grants. I just love it the way these people talk about disinformation and protecting democracy. No, they're not de protecting democracy. They're trying to silence oppositions. They're trying to quiet the voices that are opposed to them. That's all it is. It's that case in every country all over the world. What we need worldwide is we need free and open intercourse between the citizens. The ability to discuss issues openly and look at issues carefully and decide what the truth is and then base our decisions on that. That's what we need. We don't need all this so-called government help to protect us. <laughs> the only thing we need protection from is our own governments. Hmm. Anyway, that's the news for today. I pray for you, my followers, everyone that's viewing this video, that you have an abundant life, that you live a long time, that you're healthy, and that God keeps you safe from harm. I pray that he does the same thing for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you let your request be made known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.